What's up everybody, Atticus here. With the classic launch right around the corner, I wanted to share with you some common and some overlooked leveling tips to help you get to 60. Let's get into it. Number one, leveling guide. As a general mindset for leveling, you always wanna be thinking a few steps ahead. Following a leveling guide can definitely help you with that. As I've said in the past, leveling isn't very linear in Classic. You don't normally just stay in one zone until it's complete. You'll find yourself jumping from zone to zone a lot, and having a guide to tell you the best way to do that will take a lot of stress off of you. I usually use Joanna's leveling guide, but ClassicWow.Live has one as well. I'll leave a link to both down below. Number two, Spirit. A stat that gets overlooked quite a bit for leveling. It actually benefits Warrior's health regen more than any other class, and in recent years people have been doing some solid testing, and I myself have tried it, and the amount of downtime between fights shaves off a ton of time from leveling. I'm not saying that strength and agility aren't worth stacking, but the amount of time you shave off from killing a mob with added strength and agility is not nearly as much as the downtime you decrease with a heavy bump in spirit. Number 3. Dungeon Quest There are a ton of quests that only take one run through a dungeon to get you a guaranteed upgrade and try to really think about the choices you have when choosing a reward. For example, again, as a warrior, the Leaders of the Fang quest in Wailing Caverns has two great rewards, Crescent Staff and Wing Blade. At first glance, you might think Wing Blade with another one-hander or shield would be the best bet, because the stats are obviously made for melee. But disregard the stats and just look at the two weapons DPS. Crescent Staff is far superior. Even though warriors don't need intellect at all, one-handed weapons have a higher chance to miss, and hit rating is not a common stat to find while leveling. So the two-hander is a far better choice, and this one will actually last you into your 30s. Number 4. Grinding. The bulk of your XP will actually come from killing mobs, not turning in quests. So when you're stuck on that quest trying to just get one item to drop, don't give up on it. This is actually a good thing in a sense. And while you're running from place to place and you have to go through a mob dense area, just grind your way through them. This will help you stay a little bit above the average level for the zones, essentially making questing much easier. Number 5. Level 40 Mount. You always want to be thinking about getting your mount at level 40. One of the biggest time sinks you'll deal with in Classic is simply traveling. So getting your mount as quickly as possible will help you shave a lot of time off of traveling, making your life much easier. So you need to be thinking about this from the very second you start leveling and start saving money. Which brings us to our next topic. Number 6. Professions. Saving up 100 gold before level 40 isn't exactly easy. What I've found to work for me, and actually has me end up with gold left over after buying my mount, is to pick up mining and skinning and level those as I go. And I also level first aid as it's pretty easy and helps out tremendously with downtime. Quick tip for mining. The biggest hurdle early on is getting to the point where you can mine 10 ore, so to jump that hurdle, just save all of your copper ore and once you have 100 ore saved up, you can smelt it and it will push your mining skill over the 65 points required for mining 10 ore. So with the mining mats, you want to at least try to put all of the ore, bars, or stone on the auction house, but sometimes it's more beneficial to vendor depending on the current state of the market. Another option if you're a melee class would be to have a blacksmith make some sharpening stones out of some of the stone you get. And as far as skinning goes, it's pretty simple to level and you shouldn't have an issue keeping it on par while you level up. And with everything you get, the market will more than likely be flooded, so it's usually more lucrative to just vendor all the leather you get until later levels. This essentially just makes each beast drop more money for you. Number 7. Skipping Skill Ranks Certain skills are not worth buying while leveling. I do think that you should at least get rank 1 of every ability, but past rank 1 you should only buy abilities that have a direct impact on your leveling. As a warrior, things like rank 2 Demo Shout or rank 2 Thunderclap aren't really going to have that big of an impact, so saving the gold is worth more. Number 8. Bags. Another crucial part to saving money is getting bags and upgrading them when you can. As soon as I can, I get a full row of 6 slot bags, and once I finish each tier of bandages and first aid, I start saving my cloth to have a tailor make bigger bags for me and then I try to put my old ones on the auction house to get a return on my investment. The main reason having good sized bags is important is that you don't want to be throwing anything away if you can help it. You should be filling your bags and vendoring everything that you can't sell in the auction house. Literally every piece of copper counts in Classic. Number 9. Pulling properly. I've mentioned this in other videos, but pulling a mob out of a pack can be the difference in getting the quest item you need or taking a long run back from the graveyard. So to do this, simply use a ranged ability to aggro the mob, and now, since you have dealt damage to that mob, it will follow you further than the rest of the mobs that came with it. So you just run until you see all the other mobs turn back, and now you can fight the mob you need in peace. Number 10. Duo or Trio Leveling Groups of 3 or higher get an XP bonus modifier, but the XP gets split more and more. So you do get more XP overall, but you have to kill more stuff to accumulate it, but you kill stuff more quickly. Also, every class has a few classes that they synergize well with. I'm not an expert in this category, but I do know classes without mana like Rogue and Warrior synergize extremely well with any class that can heal. My favorite is Warrior Shaman. Picture it like this. You're pulling a few mobs at a time, and the Warrior gets down to 20% health by the end of the fight. Now the Shaman can toss a heal or two on him, leaving him out of mana, but the Warrior can keep on pulling while the Shaman sits down to drink, so there's virtually no downtime in this group. Well that wraps it up for this video. I really hope these tips helped you out. 
Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. I'll leave a link down below. And until next time, stay strong and stay hungry. See ya!